Hello and welcome to Center Stage where the lights are shining brightly today on Michael Christofferson. Welcome, Michael. Good morning. This program is uh, just an opportunity for us to get to know Michael a little bit better and some of our other staff members in the Sioux Falls School District, some of uh, the, your job responsibilities, some of those um, things that make Michael Michael. And uh, so we'll spend the next half hour just chit chatting and a little bit about um, your role and uh, We'll get started. So Wonderful. tell us about Michael Christofferson. You are now Director of Information and Technology Services. ITS, Director yeah. of ITS, right here with us today. Yeah. So well, appreciate you having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, you joined the Sioux Falls School District in July of 2016. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got here. Sure. No, uh, I, I, I'm an educator by trade, and if I go a little farther back in history, uh, I started my role as an ag educator, okay. uh, taught agriculture education, I taught shop classes, anything welding to automotive. Wait a minute, shop classes, do we still have still all have all fingers? the digits. All right, yeah. nice. <laughs> and uh, I think I found that role, I wasn't sure coming out of high school exactly what I wanted to do, but mom was an educator, she was a fourth grade teacher, dad okay. was a farmer, and uh, so I kind of chose the middle of the yeah, road there, kind of took a little of each. and. I uh, went to SDSU for my undergrad Go Jacks. <laughs> and got that uh, <laughs> degree and found my first teaching job in Beersford. Okay. T taught for six years there before, while I was getting my master's degree from Dakota State University in educational okay. technology. With that role, I made a nice transition with a the retirement there to Beersford from teaching to technology director of Beersford School District. Sure was there for three years before I moved to Harrisburg and was their technology director for the next seven years. Okay, so you just continue to move north a continue little bit further north, north. Yep. <laughs> until I found the sweet spot here. Okay, there you go. Well, we're glad to have you in Sioux Falls. Um, I'm guessing it's quite a bit different from your first role in technology down in Beersford in just terms of size. Um, you know, that being very a smaller school district pretty common size school district in South Dakota, I would say. Yeah. Um, but then Harrisburg, obviously their growth has significantly increased in the last couple of years, Definitely. which means their number of devices has increased over time. And then you come to Sioux Falls and it's a whole new ball game again, I would imagine. It is, it, it's a big ship and that's kind of the way I look at it. You know, uh, to change things and do things is just a, a little more coordination and uh, a lot more staff involved uh, here and a lot more devices like you mentioned. There is a lot of devices here to manage. So do we have a number <laughs> of, of devices um, that is on the tip of your tongue or is that not something we can keep track of on a regular basis. Yeah, to say the exact amount is hard, but uh, we are one-to-one -one with Chromebooks, grades three through 12. So right there, you talk about roughly between all of our devices that we have in Chromebooks, uh, 18,000 devices just in those kind of uh, devices. Right. K2, uh, we have an implementation of iPads where typically we see about eight devices per classroom. So, and all of those class classrooms, if you think of your, child's school or the school that's nearest to your home, um, all of those classrooms, and in some cases we have elementary schools that have 800 students in them, so mm -hmm. if you think of the number of, of classrooms inside that building and eight iPads per classroom, um, that adds up very quickly too. It does, and then we also manage a lot of Windows devices on top of that for some different labs environments and, and teacher workstations. and. It, uh, a lot of different platforms and making sure that we're keeping all those secure and that uh, we're making sure that blocking sites and there's a lot uh, that goes on in that environment. Right, so talking about, you know, making, um, we try to teach students uh, about, you know, keeping safe while out on the mm -hmm. internet and how their footprint can uh, stay with them for, for a number of years over time. Mm -hmm. That's part of something we teach in terms of computer and, and cybersecurity and, and technology know-how. Um, there's also a very complex system that um, makes sure that students are not able to ac access sites they shouldn't be able to access in yeah. a school setting. So there's... Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm glad you brought up the idea of that digital citizenship, you know, teaching the students, teaching our staff uh, what uh, things are out there and also letting them know the best practices that they should do in, in, as they use those devices. Right, so yes, we have technology teachers um, in the classroom, computer science courses and things mm -hmm. like that. 
um, but you're the guy kind of making sure the wrench is turned to make sure this is open, that's closed. I know that's not the right term. Correct. And <laughs> that's uh, not me, but just a wonderful department behind sure. that, that we work together and kind of use all those uh, great minds to um, help secure things and work in the back end. Uh, we do work closely with the state, uh, the BIT, Bureau of Information Technology, to make sure our systems are secure. Uh, they do provide us a lot of resources as well. Right, so it's a complex um, system. It has to be. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're still probably in the infant stages of, of technology if you look over time and kind of where that's gonna lead us. Any, any predictions um, on your part about where we're headed? Yeah, it's definitely changing. That's the biggest thing. Uh, every day it changes and just trying to keep up with that. What that looks like, uh, good question because it changes <laughs> so fast. Uh, whether that be the device type or what's out there on the internet for resources, uh, we definitely see a lot more digital curriculum in, in our environments now. Uh, but uh, definitely a changing, I think, about just positions and, and staff. You know, a lot of jobs in technology, whether it be in the school district or outside, some of those positions weren't created 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. These are all new positions. And uh, some of the stats out there on what they're looking for for additional positions in technology aren't even created yet. Right. And we worry about the workforce that we'd have for that opportunity. Right. That is something that we've, you know, um, said a number of times over the years is, you know, our mission statement is to educate and prepare each student to succeed in a changing world. Gosh, that sounds simple, except we're educating kids now for jobs that don't exist yet. Correct. And so, you know, they'll, they'll um, be with us maybe as a, a freshman, they'll be with us for four years, they'll go to college, and, and the job there's, they may have, those kids who are freshmen now, the job they may have in 10 years after college, we don't even know what that is yet. So it's, yeah. it's creating minds that are um, analytical and, problem solvers and, and that type of thing that are is so critical. Definitely. Yeah, we'll need those resources in the future for sure. Yeah. So how, how did you come about your interest in technology? Um, have you always been sort of a, a person that dabbles in that kind of thing, taking stuff apart, putting it back together, or where did your love for technology come from? Sure, that's a great question. It actually probably drove most when I started teaching in Beersford even before I taught one day in the classroom, they provided me the opportunity with the statewide TTL programs uh -huh. that I was able to take that right in Beersford. They hosted that, and I was able to develop my first website for my class and really strive to have great technology in my classroom through that program. And I think that's where it started. But then even more, I was able to take advantage of some of the grant opportunities I wrote for technology in my classroom. Uh, through a lot of the state funded grant and the Carl Perkins dollars sure. for career and technical education. I got my own set of laptops and that was early on in 2002 and had those available in my classroom. So I think that really drove what I wanted to do with technology in my classroom. And I could see how technology integrated was so efficient in my classroom and how the kids learned with that and how we're working with a different uh, group of kids that l they're digital natives. They, they know mm -hmm. this stuff and they rely right. on it. So I could see the effect of how technology played in the classroom clear back then, and that's why it drove me to get my master's degree and really get involved in technology, especially as it relates to classroom environment and in schools. Well, and, and your uh, love of, as you said, your dad is a farmer, and technology now in farming is so amazing. Um, GPS on you know our, mm -hmm. our big equipment and, and things like that I mean it, technology is really changing farming in that respect too it is I think agriculture relies heavily on technology it's funny you mention that because I even one of my grant proposals was related on a GPS system where we simulated uh, what a farmer would be doing out in the field for uh, different uh, methods of uh, practicing um, trying to get the soil at the right areas, uh, precision farming type okay. applications. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just kind of simulate a small thing by getting a set of GPSs for our classroom to kind of map out soil tests and we'd test soil. So sure. yeah, it's the same and only things to automate 
tractors on in fields it's just amazing crazy how much that has influenced agriculture over time and it has. you know we we hear a lot about agriculture and it, yes it's still lifeblood of of south dakota mm -hmm. although the number of farmers decreasing and and um, your dad being a farmer my dad being a farmer and you know in terms of trying to um that's a whole new world for my dad who's 69 who gets you know he needs a new tractor but oh my gosh look at all this these buttons what do i do <laughs> yeah. it's not as uh, mechanical as it used to be yep. um there's there's quite a bit of uh know-how probably a lot required. of jobs were created just around that you know being right. able to run technology for the ag community absolutely so very much drives what we do in the classroom mm -hmm. also um, literally drives uh, things out in the agricultural <laughs> world as Definitely. well. And so um, pretty amazing and, and a, a great uh, expansive opportunity, I guess. Technology can pretty much, obviously in the medical community, there's significant mm -hmm. need for, for technology and that know-how um, and so many different facets. So yep. in terms of um, Michael and his uh, home life. I, I know Michael has a busy life um, outside of his very busy work schedule. Sure. You have three kiddos. Yep. And uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Sure. And just getting off the topic of uh, technology in the medical field, that's actually my wife, Karina. She works for Sanford Health in the technology field. Uh, so it's uh, played right in there. We're perfect. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, I don't uh, think I knew that, but gosh, she sounded like one. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, led me into that one. So she uh, works for Sanford Health in that capacity. Sure. Uh, we had our first child, Caitlin. She's nine now, and in fourth grade. Okay. Uh, so she is, brings a lot of excitement to our life. Uh, she's into soccer and music, and she was selected for the. Uh, state uh, elementary honors choir oh, so that was exciting nice. for us and very she'll be nice. doing that in February my middle child also daughter Emily she's a go-getter too soccer and middle activity child, she's got to be a go-getter yeah I know <laughs> as am I a middle child oh, okay all right yeah so she and then my baby boy Jace just turned two in December okay. so we have uh, a little mix in the family absolutely. now absolutely keep us going but uh, absolutely yeah, and are joy. they are they into technology as well Oh yeah, they are into technology. They love their devices, and uh, you know we try to limit our screen time, mm -hmm. but yet uh, provide them educational opportunities on those devices because there is great value there. Right? Yeah, there are a lot of great apps and a lot mm -hmm. of great um, tools for kids, and uh, the, you know they it can keep them busy, but it also can keep them learning as well. So as long as you're selecting the right right types of things. Definitely. Um, beyond that, I know you have another significant love in your life, and it's a baseball team. It is. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge Chicago Cubs fan and uh, it's a great year to be a Chicago Cubs fan. Uh, growing up I was a young kid probably four years old and I would watch WGN because that was pretty much that was all that was available in Little Miller, South Dakota for me to watch for baseball. So it was either the Cubs or the Braves because TBS had the Braves. Okay. And I sure. went with the Cubs because I had the love for Harry Carey. And okay. Cubs win! <laughs> Cubs win! Holy cow, fans! So you you heard that over time and that yeah, just reeled you in. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, it was a great opportunity to see them finally win after 108 years this year, that World Series, in an exciting World Series. Right, too. yeah, it wasn't just a, a give me in the mm -hmm. end, game, game seven, give yeah. me or whatever, so that's, yeah. that's awesome. So you followed that very closely, or is, is your whole family a Cubs family? By default now, yeah, they okay. never were, but uh, <laughs> since I, dad is, they, oh, okay. they are obligated to that. They don't have to like the basketball college teams I do, but the Cubs, they they have to like the Cubs. <laughs> this is a rule in, until in they the leave my house. house. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So those um, games and that were going on in the World Series, we had a opportunity to um, be on a, a work experience at that time, and you were just glued to the TV. Um, yep did our work during the day but in the evenings you were pretty much watching those games it was, very closely <laughs> yeah it was very nice experience to be able to share that with all of you and uh especially deb mullenberg wilson yeah. uh, another <laughs> true cubs fan you know that we were rooting together right right good experiences um talking about that uh we met in um kansas city with some other uh, school districts of like size mm -hmm. and uh great experience to uh, communicate with the other 
IT professionals in, in these other school districts from across the Midwest. Um, I met with the, the communication folks, um, our superintendent met with the superintendents, just to be able to share information and, and uh, really mm -hmm. see, okay, what's effective, what's working well in your district, um, what can we bring and share with you so that you can learn. Mm -hmm. um, you've stayed quite connected with that group um, since that time. What, what sort of value has that brought to your position? Yeah, it was a great experience, that benchmarking consortium with that, you know, just the data that was available when we dug in that to see what goes well, how we can influence things, that part was good. But just sharing our experiences and what things are out there that we can use as resources for our district from a technology standpoint, uh, you know, is there things uh, that we don't see um, with other schools in the state being so much smaller than us maybe? Mm -hmm. Uh, this gave us an opportunity to see how bigger environments or similar size environments uh, are doing things and maybe it gave us some ideas that aha moment right. I think was uh, very good and then I think we provided them some of those aha moments and mm -hmm. it's just that sharing resources and, and how you make things work. Right. So what do you think Sioux Falls is doing extremely well on in terms of um, you know technology and its uses? Are, are we um, you know, a leader in, in one particular area that, that you notice. Sure, and I think we are a leader in a lot of areas, but definitely with our one-to-one -one program that uh, we make those available to uh, students uh, on a regular basis. They're comfortable with the devices. It's used in a lot of our curricular areas now. But then also when we look at this time of year when we're getting into assessments, whether it be the WIDA testing, the Smarter Balance testing, that student's comfortable with their device because they've had it all year long. Uh, they can utilize it at uh, its capacities and they don't uh, worry about some, maybe some other schools get on that device and they're not comfortable with it to take that test. Mm -hmm. I think they're very comfortable at that point with the device and they're familiar. That makes maybe the assessment part of that uh, less worrisome. They could come in with a comfortable level. Right, so um, I know my oldest daughter has a device, you know, that she's using the Chromebook, that type of thing. And they are, it's crazy how, um, you know, you and I open it and, well, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure <laughs> not, but me, I open it and okay, I have to get my bearings and, you know, go from here and, and they're just getting to where they need to go. They know all about mm -hmm. the functions of Word, of Excel, of all of these other programs mm -hmm. and they know how to maximize. Um, and really use it as a tool for their learning and not um, just, okay, I'm gonna sit down and master this computer. It's they're mastering the, the, the curriculum it is. through the use of the mm -hmm. computer. Yeah, I think we've got a great uh, staff that's helped to uh, teach that. Our t classroom teachers do a great job of integrating that, not having technology be an end itself, but really it's integrated into what they're doing already and maximizing that curriculum at that point. Of course, when we put um, all of these devices into the hands of uh, our students, geez, sometimes they happen to get dropped or... <laughs> yep, that is part of it. Uh... That is part of it, the repair. Um, we take care of all the repairs or most of the repairs anyway. Correct, we do a lot of in-house and uh, kind of our go-to on that, uh, Carolyn, we really rely on that. She uh, is amazing. Yep, <laughs> and uh, can do anything from screen repairs on iPads uh, to uh, our BCS staff help with the uh, Chromebooks, uh, repairing those. And, and BCS, you have to yep, tell me. Building, building computer specialists. specialists. Yep, are out there getting those prepared and helping uh, Carolyn's with some of those repairs as well. Uh, so it's been. Uh, and that's a significant task. You have as many devices as we do. Yes, that is a large volume. Ongoing task. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a, a flash drive to Carolyn. Um, it literally fell apart and it had some very crucial information mm -hmm. on this flash drive and she performed this like surgery <laughs> and all of my information, whoops, this, she's gonna have to repair this too now. <laughs> um, all of my information just like that was, was back. It's and feeling. so <laughs> it's amazing to have people that are that skilled mm -hmm. and um, that I think is something the Sioux Falls School District can, can really um, put a flag in its its cap about too yeah. is we have some really amazing experts that are we are available. very fortunate that's for sure uh, we have our own development team that a lot of uh, schools don't have the opportunity to have so we develop our in-house uh, programs as well not only for the day-to-day -day stuff uh, that all teachers use but also from like an HR 
perspective and finance you know we support all those systems I internally with our support staff and uh, I definitely think we're leading edge on a lot of those opportunities and things we do um, as a district yeah so you must have a staff of like 500 or so <laughs> Not quite. No? Uh, closer to that 30 mark. Oh, 30? Yeah, okay. not quite. Well, how, how do you manage to, to make that all happen? I mean, it seems like mm -hmm. um, people probably have their, their major role, but there's a lot of um, assisting and helping along the way. Correct. A lot of teamwork. Uh, not only do I wear a lot of hats, but those staff members have to wear a lot of hats in order to get this done. A lot of organization, communication has to take place so that we are a well-oiled running machine. Right. So not only that, but um, you're, you also oversee student records? Correct, yep. So the information part in the record system is also out at uh, Central Services with us. Uh, we do a lot of the online registration is uh, held in our department. That's a big process now that uh, we provide uh, another piece of technology to get information into our system. Uh, but all the records that we transfer for students moving in and out of the district happens at that uh, level too. Right, and we have lots of movement, um, some schools mm -hmm. more than other, but Correct. a lot of um, information sharing that has to happen with other school districts and, and collection mm -hmm. of student records yep. from those other school districts as yep. well. In and out, and we have to always regulate the, our, our laws and regulations on that too, so that becomes uh, a process as well. Right. And uh, probably an unknown area of the school district, uh, the print shop, we, even with all this technology, we still need printed material, although mm -hmm. um, we've changed that or that's morphed over time as well, but that's, that's kind of another area that maybe people don't think about. Sure, yeah, the centralized printing, uh, you know, anytime you can buy those uh, heavier duty industrial machines, uh, a lot of times you get those at a cost savings per page and uh, we do some centralized things where we provide bindings and, and uh, special effects cuttings and, and pamphlets that uh, our print shop uh, does for the entire district. Right, so when you're a, a district the size that we are, which is uh, over 24,000 students, mm -hmm. uh, 3,300 staff members, um, you know, there's a lot of, even though we're in this technology age, there's still the necessity of papers and, and uh, actually collateral materials mm -hmm. that that are ne are needed in order correct yeah we still we still print even though we're one-to-one -one on a lot of those devices uh, but definitely I'm sure the printing has came down with those devices in the shared atmosphere of being able to collaborate on Google Docs and things right. there's not as much printed but uh, there's still a lot printed still a, <laughs> a necessity in in our ever-changing world but yeah. still that paper is it's kind of like libraries it's just never going to go away exactly i mean your, your your books are never going to yes you can get them on your kindle and, and all of your other devices um, but those books are are uh, never going to go away either so yeah well any final thoughts from michael christopherson um it's great to have you in sioux falls mm -hmm. been an okay journey so far i know you have to work with me which is a <laughs> challenge sometimes so far so good i don't see any problems with that i enjoy our uh, ability to work together on different projects Absolutely. already good. so it's been uh, about just over six months now i'm getting more acclimated to the job so uh, it's not as big a learning curve anymore mm -hmm. uh, but like I said in one of my speeches, it's a, kind of the World Series of Jobs for me. It's a great <laughs> opportunity to work with a lot of individuals and uh, affect a lot of people's lives, and it uh, is my hope. So Wonderful. We're, the Cubs did it for you. Yep. And now Michael's got the World Series job, and so go, Michael. We're we'll have to get you a big pennant <laughs> or something like that to, to wave. Maybe. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our half hour's time here with Michael Christofferson, our director of information technology services. Um, certainly great to have you on board and you're um, always uh, learning and always looking for the new latest information. So that's that's a great um, uh, piece to have in our district and, and making sure that we're heading in the right direction. So Very thanks, good. Michael. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for joining us on Center Stage.